Welcome to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light. What's your story? What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I am your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic paralyzed below my shoulders in a power wheelchair user. Today I'm wearing a, a white uh, collared shirt with a gray uh, vest or gray jacket over top. I'm in a power wheelchair with a headrest and I have a quad stick and my uh, mouth controller and a, uh, my, my water cup with my, uh, my straw in front of me. Um, and I'm also a uh, trial attorney I am a, and the community relations manager here at Accessibility. Um, I'm a passionate disability rights advocate, and I love breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. And today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, we're joined by Trisha Downing, an author and a learning designer at Ernst & Young, EY. Welcome, Trisha. Thanks, Josh. Nice to see you. You as well. So Trisha, tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey. Absolutely. I will start with a visual introduction first. Also, um, I am a biracial female. I have shoulder length, dark hair. It's straight today because I did nothing to it. Um, I am wearing an army green shirt with a, a pink around the collar and I'm sitting in front of an orange wall, which is the um, my office. And I'm also a wheelchair user. I use a manual wheelchair, which you can't see from the screen, but um, is there nonetheless. Um, about my story, I was a competitive cyclist in 2000. And when I was on my way home from a training ride one day, I was hit head on by a car and instantly paralyzed. And so I am a T4 paraplegic and have been for 22 years now. Wow. Wow. And then after, after the cycling, I know a little bit about you because you're awesome. And, uh, but I know you became an Olympian. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, my Paralympic journey actually didn't start until um, 2016. Right after um, I got out of the hospital initially, I was doing triathlons and um, I did triathlons for about 10 years. Um, I focused primarily on iron distance. So that's a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike and a marathon in the racing chair. Um, but after um, 2010 and going to the Hawaii Ironman, I had some shoulder issues, so I decided to change sports, and I did a short stint in um, as a rower and then um, moved into the shooting sports where I started shooting pistol. And so um, pistol shooting took me to the 26 Paralympic Games in Rio, and I am currently retired and um, have moved to kind of the next stage of my life. And you became an author. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, I became an author in 2010. I um, published my memoir at that time. And then in 2018, I published my first fiction novel. And I am currently working actually on two books. I have almost completed my second fiction novel, and I am working on my second memoir. That is awesome. And yeah. I know on social media, I've seen you've been promoting your book club. Tell us a little bit about your book club. Yeah, you know, I just, I started a book club um, because I really wanted to draw attention to authors with disabilities and characters with disabilities. Um, we all know that the representation um, in books, in movies, on TV um, for people with disabilities is still uh, lagging, even though it is getting better. It's still far behind where um, it could and should be to represent the greater society. So I started a book club um, 
to read uh, all kinds of books from memoirs to fiction. Um, I think we'll probably find some children's books along the way, um, but that really um, highlight the disability experience and normalize it and show that those of us with disabilities have just regular lives like anybody else. Um, we just might go about doing things a little bit differently. That's all. And how can people sign up or find the book club? Um, the best together. place to sign up is um, just from my website, which is trishadowning.com, and that's T-R-I-C-I-A, downing.com, and you can sign up there for the book club. You can also follow me on um, Instagram, and I post the monthly reads there, and um, so yeah, that's how to get in touch with me. And then you're with your work with EY. Tell us a little bit about that. So I am an instructional designer. I help design corporate training for our people at EY. Um, so some of it is um, like professional skills, you might call them soft skills. Um, and some of it is technical skills, depending on what they need to learn. But we design um, good learning experiences so that they can um, retain the most information, learn the most information in a in a short amount of time and have good quality instruction. So I've been at EY for um, two and a half years and uh, have really enjoyed um, learning this position because it's a little bit new for me. It really combines all the skills that I've done throughout my entire career, but puts them in a little bit different type of a position. So it's been a learning and growing experience, but it's also been um, really exciting for me just to to create something new in my professional life. That's awesome. And is there any particular kind of ERG or any type of uh, employee resource group that you've been a part of the disability kind of mindset as well? Uh, we do have a lot of uh, employee resource groups. We actually call them professional networks. I am part of the Accessibilities Network, the um, Black Professionals Network, the Women's Network, uh, the Latina Network, and the Unity Network, which is our LGBTQ um, plus network. And so um, I've had the opportunity to go to the, some of the meetings. Um, of course, when I started at EY, most everything was online. So that's been the bulk of my engagement, but we're starting to be able to do in-person activities and I um, hope to become more involved in the Denver community in these networks. And I also had the opportunity last summer to go to Dallas for the Disability and Conference as a member of the Accessibilities Professional Network. So that was really a highlight of the year. Um, and gave me a chance to just meet a lot of great people, including you, Josh, and um, continue my work as a, a disability advocate and um, learn from other people. Yeah, that was such an incredible conference, and it was a hot one. Yeah, I think it got up almost like 110 plus degrees, but yes, we made it, it was we hot. And <laughs> we had the heat, and uh, but no, that was. Uh, all the right conversations were, were being had at that conference around disability and around the corporate world and kind of changing the mindsets of making sure that voices are heard and included. And, um, no, I, I loved it. And it was such a pleasure meeting you. And, Absolutely. And, it was a good time. Yeah, so I want to hear more memorable moments other than disability in, but what are some EY memorable moment, moments that have had a lasting impact on you? Um, you know, I think that the memorable moments have really been just having this experience, um, having the opportunity to go to a new organization and learn and develop, um, you know, my skills in, in new areas. And I think that, you know, like I, I haven't had too many positions in my working career. Um, so, you know, starting something new was uh, just really exciting. It was a way to grow professionally and to really push myself out of my comfort zone. And I think if I look back on the highlight is um, just kind of knowing where I was on day one and, you know, terrified because I, I had never worked any place that had more than 75 people. And here I am at a global organization with over 300,000 um, employees. And so it's just to see the growth that I've made from 
day one to now just really um, just makes me proud of what I've been able to accomplish. And I still have so much more to learn, but, um, you know, I have a different outlook on on work now in terms of, you know, you don't have to know everything going into a job. You just have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone and grow with the position. And, and I think that I've been able to do that. I love that. Now. Getting outside your comfort zone, having a willingness to try, being willing to learn, like being willing to try. Like it's, that's all any, anybody can, any business can ask for you or you can ask for yourself. And the second you do that, it's just all of a sudden new opportunities, new experiences, new challenges are overcome. It's, it's a forward moving way of life, which I love. Uh, Absolutely. About you saying that. And what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word accessibility? When I hear the word accessibility, the first thing that comes to mind is independence. Um, and that might mean different things for different people, but being able to be as independent as possible, um, you know, with your abilities, with um, your mobility, you know, whatever type of um, ability or disability you want to say, um, going into a situation, being able to, you know, kind of do things on your own terms. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I'll call a restaurant or something and say, you know, is your restaurant accessible? And they'll say, oh yeah, we just have one step. And, you know, to me, when, you know, when people say that it's, you know, they're, they're taking away that, you know, bit of independence that I would have if I, if I could have access to a ramp. And so, you know, I mean, sure, it's not that big of a deal for somebody to pop me up one step, but that's not allowing me to be as an independent as I am, um, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever, capable of being. Um, and I think we all deserve the dignity to be able to um, use our abilities to the fullest. And um, that might mean something different for everyone, but being able to access um, life and, and everything that life has to offer, I think is a really, um, it's important. It's, it's what we're all here to do. And, um, you know, when we don't get that opportunity, it, it diminishes both our experience and diminishes us as people. And I don't think that, you know, I, I don't think anybody's any more important than anybody else. We're all, you know, here on this earth to have a human experience. And I think we should be able to have it um, to the best of our abilities and together and together. Yes. And we, it's a much stronger community when we're together. And, Absolutely. Um, and there's a lot we can learn from each other and it's so many different perspectives, different mindsets, different approaches, different abilities, all, yeah. all that comes together and creates a, a beautiful way of living. And, um, yeah, no, I'm there with you. And Absolutely. If you had one one thing that comes to mind or one thing you'd want to say for uh, people without disabilities, businesses, why people with disabilities or even wheelchair users should be kind of included in the conversation. What, what would that be? Um, you know, I, I think kind of going back to what I just said, I, I think that we all, um, you know, we're, we should be equals. We sh it shouldn't be, you know, this person's more important or this person is marginalized or this person can't do this, this person can't do that. And I think we all deserve, uh, you know, a seat at the table and um, to have our voices heard. And so that is, I think, what I, I want people to know about, you know, individuals with disabilities, whether they're wheelchair users or have another disability in that, um, you know, we all want the same things. We're not we don't have special needs. We're not looking for something different. Um, we're looking to have um, the best experience that we can have during the days that we are on earth. And I think that everyone deserves to kind of have a say in how we, um, you know, how we look at our society, how we look at each other and how we treat each other. I love that. And what do you think are some of the biggest gaps with businesses prioritizing kind of access and inclusion? Um, you know, I think with businesses, it's, it's um, well, 
I, I guess I have to say with disability in total, if you um, are not educated on disability, if you don't know people with disabilities, um, it can seem like a, a big deal to have to you know, make changes or make accommodations. And I think that um, because there are so many different disabilities and because disabilities can be so different and because we are all individuals and we are needing, um, you know, different kind of maybe um, accessibility or, you know, we're looking for some different things, I think it can sometimes overwhelm people. And, you know, when you're overwhelmed and you're, you've kind of got that deer in the headlights look and, and you just kind of freeze and you don't do anything. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I feel like that's kind of the way businesses are. They've been um, socialized to think that, you know, accommodations have to be expensive and that people with disabilities are always going to be sick or that they're, um, you know, a liability in your company. And, and I think that's, you know, that's how we've been socialized, but it's, it's not true. And, and I think that people with disabilities bring a lot to um, businesses and to organizations. So I, I think it's just a matter of, you know, continuing to educate people. And, and it seems like such a long road because, you know, educating one person at a time or one group at a time, it, it's, it's a lot. Um, and it takes a lot of time, but you know, it's going to take a lot of time to, you know, make way undoing stereotypes and breaking down biases. And, um, you know, I, I think it's it's difficult and it's a long road and, and some people are just not willing to um, see a different way and to, to go that different way. Um, but I, I feel optimistic because I feel like a lot of the younger people um, that I've met, um, they don't really, you know, blink an eye at, at disability. They're just like, oh, hey, you know, you're in a wheelchair. Let's do things this way. You know, like I just have, I've had a lot of interactions with younger people who just aren't so phased by it. And I think it's because they've grown up in a world where they've really been thinking about their identities. They've been you know, self-selecting and telling people what their identity is and should be and how they feel. And they respect that. They respect that from, from each other. If somebody wants to go by the pronoun they, you know, kids are like, hey, cool, okay, right on, you know, let's do this. So, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's a change in collective mindset. And I think that that's something that um, we're going to see a really refreshing change from as, as these kids grow up and grow up with this open mind of, you know, let people be who they're going to be and they still matter and they're still part of our world. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with being unique because we all are. We all are. And Trisha, thank you for being so unique and so awesome and, and for joining us today on Accessory Spotlight Sessions. But thank you, Trisha. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And to all of our guests that have stayed to the end, thank you for being here. Until next time, everyone take care.